Hello and welcome to Rick's RC Flying Channel. In this video, I'm just going to show how I make a fiberglass cowling uh, just using a foam mold. So let's get started. And this is uh, just ordinary uh, styrofoam. And uh, I didn't have thicker ones, uh, so I had to make do with this uh, one inch uh, styrofoam. But I basically just laminated it together. So I've um, I basically uh, sort of found the approximate center there. And, um, you know, I'm just going to be drawing a circle and then cutting it out. My bandsaw can only cut a certain thickness of foam, so I have to make it sort of in two sections and then I'll glue it together. So that's the first half. And now I'm simply going to uh, cut out the second uh, piece here in a second. Now, of course, I'm used a, a bandsaw, but you could use a uh, hand scroll saw to cut the uh, circle out. And I'm just now applying a, a basically carpenter's glue and putting on a very thin layer and now sandwiching it uh, together. And uh, once you have it all nicely lined up, you can uh, just uh, put some weights on it and best to let it uh, dry overnight. Here's a little trick I uh, do. Uh, I don't like it when the bristles ever come off a brush, whether it's painting or gluing. So I put a little CA glue on it and it helps prevent uh, the bristles ever uh, coming off. So I'm just inspecting the mold uh, just to make sure that it's uh, perfectly shaped and smooth. And if not, uh, just uh, use some sandpaper and correct any uh, flaws that you may detect. And once you're happy, you mix the epoxy. One nice thing about System West, you can get these pump actuators. Make it makes it very easy to get the right ratio, which happens to be one to one. I'm using uh, the slow hardener, which gives me about 30 minutes of uh, working time. And I'm just checking the time there. And now I'm applying uh, the epoxy fairly thick. And uh, we're going to use this to tack on the fiberglass cloth to get it uh, started. And uh, now I'm going to apply some more epoxy on it, and I'm just going to more or less dab the brush on it, try to get it to saturate that area of the fiberglass cloth. And that's basically going to hold it onto the mold. Now the tack area, I'm going to make it about three to four inches, and that'll give it a pretty good grip on the mold. And then uh, once that's accomplished, then I'll start applying the epoxy as I work my way down. Now notice the direction that I make the brush strokes. You can see I have about three inches, four inches that I use to tack, and now the brush is working its way in a downward motion. The reason I do this, as I'm stroking the brush in that direction, it's actually pulling on the fiberglass cloth and smoothing it out. And it's a very effective way of uh, applying it, such as in this case with this cowling. Now, as you brush the uh, epoxy onto this uh, mold, uh, make sure you really saturate that fiberglass cloth. We want it to really have a wet look. Uh, even if you have the odd run on it or something, don't worry about that because we're going to end up removing a lot of that epoxy. So now we're going to put the overlap over this leading edge portion of the cowling. And I'm using a six ounce fiberglass cloth and it's getting a little bit hard to make that curve. So here I am just cutting little sections there as you can see. And that'll make it easier to follow that curve. Now don't worry about 
those uh, cuts there because we're going to be overlapping a couple times. So it's not going to compromise the strength in that area at all. Now you initially use the brush to uh, fold over that edge uh, with the epoxy and then I go with my fingers and I start more or less for no better term kind of massaging the edge to get out any of uh, the possible overlaps or wrinkles and by using your fingers of course obviously wearing gloves uh, it's very effective in removing uh, any of those little uh, imperfections around the edge. So after you do this a couple of times, you'll probably be pretty good at um, baking a cake like this. Anyways, uh, now we're going to put obviously the uh, face of the cowling. And you can see I just uh, cut a circular shape to the right size. And I'm doing the same thing again with the scissors, just snipping it, which is going to make it a lot easier to make that uh, curve, that circle around the front of the cowling. And of course, it's overlapping. And... Uh, you know, as we do this a couple of times, it's going to be a total of three layers. So, um, you know, there, there's, like I said before, nothing is going to be compromised strength-wise just because we put those little slit marks in. Now, as you apply the epoxy uh, on this, well, front face surface of the cowling, always try to work from the center out uh, with your brush strokes as much as you possibly can. This helps avoid uh, getting any uh, wrinkles because basically you're stretching it up from the center to the outer edge. And again, here I am with the fingers massaging the edge to get out any of the uh, wrinkles. And even should the odd small wrinkle exist once it's dry, it'll be uh, fairly easy just to sand that out. Uh, eventually, when this is completely done, you just literally won't see any of the imperfections that you might see at this stage of uh, making your cowling. Now one of the reasons we had to make these slit marks to make that curvature is because 6 ounce fiberglass cloth is uh, you know, fairly heavy and uh, it's a little stiffer because of that. The third layer will only be 2 and 3 quarter ounce uh, fiberglass cloth and it's more pliable because of its uh, lighter weight. And uh, many times you can get away without having to make the slits because it'll stretch enough. So here I am applying more epoxy because again, as before, we really want to saturate it. We want it to have that real wet look. You can see I'm stroking from the center out, pulling out any little minute uh, wrinkles and uh, really trying to saturate the edge there, get a nice thick layer of epoxy on. Areas that aren't wet enough, and that's what I'm looking for as I'm inspecting, they have kind of a white look to it. Uh, once you have enough epoxy on it, it has a very definite wet look. And uh, I'm also checking the bottom edge there just to make sure that's wet enough and it's adhering well, because that's an important edge in the back. So now all that epoxy that we applied, we're going to remove. And I uh, find using toilet paper very effective. First of all, it's rather inexpensive. And it does a very good job in uh, soaking the epoxy up. Because basically we want to remove all the epoxy on the surface. Uh, we originally made it very wet, so the cloth is impregnated with it and saturated. But we really don't want it on the surface. Because uh, it makes for a rough surface, an uneven surface, so that's why we want to remove it. So here I am just applying it everywhere and then applying a little bit of pressure on it to help uh, the uh, 
paper soak up the epoxy. Uh, well, another thing I like about uh, West Systems uh, epoxy is the fact that there's really no odor, which, uh, you know, makes it uh, far more pleasant to work with. As you remove the uh, paper, if it disturbs the fiberglass cloth in any way, just take your finger and uh, just pat it down again as you can see what I'm doing here. Now that we're finished applying the first layer of 6 ounce fiberglass cloth, we're going to let it dry 24 hours. And after the drying process, we're going to do a sanding session and basically take out any little bumps or imperfections that uh, are visible. Now whenever you're sanding, uh, particularly fiberglass, you should be wearing a mask. I happen to have a powerful dust collector, which is uh, collecting all the dust. Now I use anywhere from uh, 80 grit sandpaper, 100 to 150, and even uh, 220 uh, to get the uh, smooth effect that I uh, ultimately want. So now I'm just using a Dremel cutoff saw to take off the bottom end. It'll make it easier as we go and apply the uh, second layer. Uh, with that out of our way. Now, as I was using this Dremel cutoff uh, saw here, I actually realized after filming this that it's uh, throwing the dust off to one side. Uh, that being said, I think in the future I will wear a mask. So I'm just doing a little more sanding just to get things uh, you know, as smooth as I possibly can now before putting the next layer on. And uh, once that's done, I'm just going to take a cloth and uh, give the cowling a wipe with uh, a little bit of lacquer that's on it. Uh, it just helps pick up all the dust. Now I'm going to skip showing you the application of the second layer of 6 ounce cloth and jumping right now to the final third layer which is the 2 and 3 quarter inch cloth. Now notice uh, the edges didn't have to be snipped. As I mentioned before it's a lighter cloth and it can easily make that uh, curve on the leading edge part of the cowling. So it uh, as you can see just bends over quite easily. So all three layers are applied exactly the same and uh, that's the only reason why I skipped the uh, second round uh, of six ounce cloths just to save some time. But here you can see the uh, top layer here or the front face of the cowling. Uh, the scissor snips weren't required because it easily makes the curvature. So again uh, after applying the epoxy after every layer we do the same thing by removing the surface epoxy off the cloth and we're uh, soaking it all up here. Now since this is the final layer, I'm actually going to go with the uh, toilet paper the second time uh, over the uh, cowling just to make sure I soak up as much as I possibly can because this will have a dramatic effect 
on the final finish of the cowling. So once this is now done, uh, we're going to let it dry 24 hours and then proceed on with the next step uh, of finishing this cowling. Okay, I got the uh, foam out, uh, basically went in with this uh, chisel and just went around the perimeter to, you know, get as close as I can to it. Um, and then I just dug it out basically and uh, have a foam bag full of foam. And then I went with 80 grit sandpaper in it just to clean it all out. And then I went and did a wipe with some lacquer on a cloth and uh, it turned out really, uh, really well. well. The next step is I'm going to make, uh, take a piece of plywood and I'm going to make a ring in here and then fiberglass that in there and then the uh, cowling will be, you know, very rigid and give me an attachment point and so forth. And then, you know, obviously uh, it needs to be sanded. The edge here is extremely strong and uh, because it's got always the overlap. So it's really, really uh, turned out good and okay that's where I'm at and I'll start making the ring you know I installed a ring which is how I mount it onto the airplane uh, blind nuts get installed on the back side and then it gets mounted to the airplane and then it just gets bolted on and uh, just to recap uh, I used two layers of six ounce fiberglass uh, cloth and then a, a third layer of two and three quarter ounce cloth now the six ounce gives it, you know, a lot of strength and the two and three quarters, which also gives it strength. But most importantly, the uh, two and three quarter ounce has a tighter, finer weave. So the epoxy resin fills it uh, a lot better when, when it comes to later on finishing the cowling with a bit of filler and primer, you don't need as much and you get a nice, really smooth finish. I gave it an initial sanding and it already feels uh, feels very good. It's a very, very strong cowling. And uh, although I will have to do some cutouts in it uh, for the muffler and so on, which I'm just, I ordered it and I'm waiting for it to arrive. Uh, but even that being said, uh, I like doing, you know, a lot of the main uh, sanding while the cowling is basically, you know, uncut. Uh, it just makes it easier and then, uh, and then later on, I cut it up and then do a very final finishing at the end. And uh, this is a 10 and a half inch cowling. And the nice thing about once you start making your own cowlings is it's a, uh, you save yourself quite a bit of money as compared to, to buying them ready made. The other thing is more times than not, yours will be stronger uh, because you have that choice when you make it. And it's custom made, you know. Uh, like in this case, I didn't want the engine exposed and I didn't want to do a, a cutout and have the cylinder stick out or anything. So I was able to make a cowling that suits my uh, design uh, aspects. And, you know, for a, it's a pretty big cowling, uh, you know, 10 and a half inch diameter and the weight of it. And, you know, even then the weight will be less because I will have to remove uh, some of the cowling for uh, the muffler and so forth. But even now, as basically a whole uh, cowling, it weighs in at eight and three eighths of an ounce. So, you know, basically eight ounces and it'll be less because uh, I do have to cut some away and, um, uh, and incredibly strong. And uh, I use uh, epoxy resin. I find epoxy resin a lot more favorable in uh, modeling. And uh, I'm not sponsored by you know any particular uh, epoxy company or anything. Uh, but this is the one I use. It's System West. And of course, you can get different hardeners. You know, being a two-part epoxy. And uh, I use the slow version, uh, which gives you a half-hour working time because you need that time when you're laying up the uh, cloth, as you saw in the video, and uh, uh, which is you know a half hour is usually once you get the hang of it is, is plenty of time. And uh, I mean it's a pretty big cowling. Smaller ones take less time. And uh, when I put this ring in, I uh, put fiberglass cloth on the back of it there, 
and I used uh, the fast for that. Also, I gave the interior a coating of uh, the fast epoxy. So um, uh, the nice thing too about using epoxy resin, uh, it can handle flexing better than uh, fiberglass polyester um, uh, without cracking. And uh, if you have to make a repair, there's no problem just you know, using epoxy resin back on top of it to make a repair. Uh, you couldn't use fiberglass polyester on top of epoxy resin and won't adhere properly. So there's a few little things you have to uh, be cautious about, but generally if you s just stick with the same product, you're, you're good. And you know, if you can uh, make a cowling, you can repair a cowling. I mean, if you ever had to do that, but um, you know, once you get the knack of it, you can make a lot of other things like wheel pants and that. I'll show you uh, sometime in the future uh, in a video how to make wheel pants. And, um, and also, you know, this mold was a one-time mold, as you saw, the styrofoam, and I had to remove all the styrofoam. And, um, but uh, again, sometime in the future, I'll show you how to work with molds, and that way you can, you know, make the same uh, cowling or wheel pants or whatever. You can do it over and over again. But it's a, it's a bit more of a process than just simply, you know, putting some styrofoam together and shaping it, which is very easy to shape, and just simply applying it. And uh, it's not that difficult to remove the styrofoam. Now, of course, there's all, many different ways of making fiberglass uh, cowlings uh, uh, with, you know, I use epoxy resin, but um, I find it's very quick and, quick and simple. Anyways, um, I hope you found it uh, useful. And if you like to see how this actually gets mounted onto the airplane, uh, I can. Uh, I have another video that's actually the airplane build project uh, with respect to this cowling. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to see just exactly how it fits on. And um, so if you like the video, please select like and subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, I always welcome them. So thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.